Hello, uh, welcome, we're live. It's uh, episode 46 of the Brugaders, uh, the dynamic duo slash league slash consortium of beer and comics. Uh, joined by Colin as always, um, but not with Colin because we're still in lockdown at the time of recording. Um, but we've got a special guest. We're um, absolutely delighted to be joined by Banksy, who is the editor, would I say? Did I get Oh, sorry. Now we, yeah, there we go. It's uh, the 77, which is a new retro anthology, sort of very much in the style of um, late 70s, 1977's uh, 2000 AD stuff, which is um, incredible, a really exciting project and um, one that we've had some of our previous guests be part of, I think Drew. Oh, was, really? We had, we had Drew Mar on a couple of weeks ago. Um, Love Drew. Good old Drew. Yeah, so, um, you can drink out of the Black Isle Brewery. Okay. Oh, really love the Black Isle Brewery. Ah, can you run it? You know, I was very fortunate that um, I handled the artwork for that in terms of it being a reward for the Kickstarter. So it mm -hmm. came to me. I had to post it on. And looking at up close, you know, it's wonderful collage work. Mm -hmm. So we did swashes behind them and then, you know, layers of um, artwork on top. It's really got that kind of 3D thing going on. And I first saw his stuff in um, Tony Foster's Comic Scene 2019 annual. Yeah. And then I met him at Thought Bubble. And then I saw a video where, uh, pardon me, but I cannot remember the name of the editor of the Beano, was raving about him. Mm. And then I saw a video with Ian Kennedy raving about him. Then <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I saw him on Scottish TV and they were raving about him. So I went, you know what? If he's good enough for all of them, he's definitely good enough for my little comic. And uh, yeah, love I, it. Um, about, I think it was 2017. We were both at this comic awards night thing. And um, we both won awards, I think, which was quite nice. But um, when I, I got chatting to him and his mum and I thought, yeah, this lad's going to do well. I know he's, I had a, we had a, a, a launch on Saturday, Zoom launch, because our official launch would have been at Lawless in Bristol, the kind of mm -hmm. Judge Dreddy 2000 AD thing. Um, and Sue Hadrill had given us the okay to do a launch there. Obviously, it hasn't happened, but, so we had to think of an alternative. Anyway, on one of the panels that we had, Drew was there, and I introduced him, and so many people were looking forward to chat to him. Do you know what I mean? There was some not really, really good comic people on there. And we had a hands up of how many people have published as many comics as Drew. I think only three people put their hand up. <laughs> should, we, um, should, uh, should we maybe point out for those that uh, maybe aren't familiar that Drew is only like, he's, he'll be 12 next month? No, he just I think actually his birthday was last week. Was it last week? Yeah, he got his batch of comics from us because that's what the, the, the contributors get. Uh, yeah. as, you know. He got that on his birthday, and his mum Kelly said it was just the best present he'd ever had. I felt so I felt so good about that, you know. I um, twelve, um, you know. I uh, I, I put in um, for my Kickstarter, my, my my recent Kickstarter, um, Drew and Kelly backed it, and um, that was that was a, a condition inside the signing that I had to say happy birthday to Drew as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, excellent, excellent. Okay, yeah. That's, um, so yeah, like you say, like it's absolutely incredible that he's he's um he's he's managed to find himself in so much um high profile stuff at such a young age. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. and he enjoys it. I know he enjoys doing his comics. Um, oh, so we had him here, and we had him on here about three four weeks ago, and absolutely his um his motivation and excitement for the for the mediums really really apparent. Like, he, very um. He's a bit of a polymath, though. I know he's into his robotics, so he went yeah. off on a big robotic competition and stuff. He's been chatting about, and he loves his science and loves his literature and his art. I guess I kind of don't know about you guys, but I think I was a bit that way when I was twelve years old as well. You know, I, I grew up with science fiction and reading and drawing and all that stuff. So uh, you know, I wonder what I wonder what he I can't say as a kid, but I wonder what he read as a younger boy. I've not actually asked him. Did you ask him those questions and stuff? I mean, what would you read today? What would you read today if you were a kid? Yeah. What, what is there, you know? You know, when I was seven, I was reading action. Yeah? So, what, so many comics then. But yeah, my, my I could have bought, Val, could have bought mm -hmm. you know, Valiant if I wanted to. I could have bought, yeah. what, uh, Warlord, um, you know, but I bought 2000 AD in Battle sometimes. 
you know. Yes. And that was good enough for me after action finished. My um, my son's twelve, and he um he reads. Uh, he quite likes. Basically, I just, I just buy loads of comics, and he'll he'll pop in with me sometimes and say, "Oh, that quite I quite like that." He's um. Does he like his manga? Um, not really. He really likes um he likes DC stuff. So, um, I always give him if, if there's a new Batman series or something, he'll get a read of that. He really likes um is it Steven Universe, the TV program on the tell. So he's got a couple of the graphic novels that have come out for that, which he really, you know, he's read them over and over again. But, um, yeah, it's just interesting, like, what um, what motivates. Uh, he finds um, he finds reading quite challenging, just, a, a, you know, getting motivated for reading. Um, mm-hmm. And the fact that, it, at the moment anyway, because we're in lockdown, um, he really, really likes his English teacher. And I think a lot of the reading he does is because he is... It, he's working to appease her, and he's working to he's working to show that show somebody that he respects that he respects their their trade, and um, so that he he's finding reading quite challenging just now because he's not got her like motivation and her uh, encouragement on a daily and, and, and like he normally would. But yeah, absolutely. It would be interesting. We might get Drew back on. He said he would come back on. I mean, yeah. we get Drew back on to actually ask him that question. Yeah. Okay, we know. <laughs> um, but yeah, please tell us about. Uh, so yeah, as we had, Drew is a collaborator on it, or was one of the the, the collaborators on the seventy seven. Um, what can you tell anybody like that doesn't actually know what we're talking about? Because we're going to use mm-hmm. the phrase the seventy seven quite a lot. What what sure. is it? Well, seventy seven in itself now is a com- is a comic. Um, it's first published this month. Uh, it had a successful Kickstarter. It's linked and affiliated with um, a working group uh, of people who also work through various um, websites and things like Twitter, and we have Facebook accounts. So it was part of a group called 1977 to 2000 AD. Since our launch, we've just shortened that. We call it the 77 to 2000 AD. Um, And obviously there's a reference to a date, uh, 1977, and it's not just the link where you say, ah, a particular comic was launched in, in 1977, but there's a, that's probably in the mix, I would say, about 30% of it. For me, it was 1977 has got other connotations. I mean, you know, I wasn't a safety pin wearing punk, do you know what I mean? But when I look back and I think about my, my attitudes and my kind of sensibilities at the time, looking at the musicians who were important to me then and still now, and sort of um, I would say then my cultural background being 10 years old in 1977 I wanted to say you know what was I really into then um, so it's 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 also a question it's also saying what was important to you in your childhood and we have a strap line that's just we're going to be kind of promoting a little bit more which is the 77 is a is, is a love letter to the comics that made us um, so it's a bit retro and we're going with that angle uh, in that they're short stories um they're written in a way which is potentially you know something that we're familiar with um in that being you know four five six pages long and um yeah we just wanted it to be a little bit anarchic uh, a bit of fun but we're trying to do it in a professional way so you know um the 77 exists now and hopefully it'll be coming out every quarter and they're still available for sale and you know contact me afterwards, um, log into our group, go, you know, wherever. We were going to be doing the usuals with Comic Scene. So where you can buy Comic Scene, we were going to be there. Um, you know, but I guess W.H. Smith and Menzies and a lot of shot at the moment, right? A shot at the moment, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm. So, uh, what, um, so you said it, um, anarchic but professional. Uh, how, um, how is, did you find the the anthology process like pulling and i know that you've got loads of guys from loads of different okay so i'm yeah okay so on an everyday basis i'm the commissioning editor and the everyday basis of what work i do at the moment in lockdown um i'm uh, working very closely with um obviously getting the work together so editorial work um and people ask me what it's like to edit um, an anthology, and I said it's something like um, it's like nailing chocolate cats to a fire guard. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> throw, a few, throw, a, throw a few things together, you know, chocolate fire guard. Yeah, of course. Herding cats. You know what I mean? 
what I've learned to do is basically do everything three times for everybody <laughs> and you get there in the end, you know, and assume that everybody hasn't listened to what you said and nobody understands what you say. And eventually everyone comes around to say, oh, yeah, we did get that email or, you know, saw that message eventually. And uh, but it goes to, goes to show I'm sitting here in my, in my, in, 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 in my uh, you know, back room of my house and this is where it's done, really. I mean, on this laptop, um, you know, so. It goes to show it's kind of it reminds me when i started doing fanzines and stuff in the 80s i'm, I'm literally back at the kitchen table with a pair of scissors cow gum you know letra set and, and 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 sniffing glue you know just that is what i'm doing man yeah so that's the kind of anarchic punk side of it I guess. yeah well i started off in a group oh, called uh, um, skate news from the fifth dimension which is a skateboarding fanzine based in bristol in that started in 1986 and i joined them in 87 so I used to be skateboarding and I used to have big hair, punky hair. Um, and uh, yeah, so it got, well, obviously Viz was pretty contemporaneous. But at one point, we were the British thing, is it? That, that, that feels kind of British, um, that, yeah. kind of, that fanzine. Yes. Um, I, I, when, you, when you were mentioning about the, the cutting things up and sticking them down, I've read, is it Chris Donald, the former yeah. editor of the Viz, his autobiography, and he talks a lot about that, you know, for yep. the first twenty issues of the Viz, it was before they before they got picked up by Virgin and moved into like bigger. Well, it was James Brown, wasn't it? ABC Publishing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He looked at us as well, um, but we kind of disbanded a little bit um, and then fed into Deadline. Okay. Um, and I went to college in Newcastle and kind of was out of the scene, and they nicked oh, wow. some of my stories. <laughs> and, uh, I kind of went you you know um but i'm back in touch with them and they're good lads and 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 the guy who did all the drawing and the work guy called bino he's just he's a genius absolute genius and they still do t-shirts because you know the internet's fascinating isn't it you can find everybody if you want to you can find them all uh, you know so uh i have no interest in but people say to me oh do you want to do you want to resurrect any of your um old stuff no i have no interest in that doing with whatsoever um i used to i was an animator um i've been i've been a filmmaker documentary maker i have no interest in any anything of mine i'm kind of really i don't know i'll do it as an older man much much older you know in the dotage now i'm just really keen and it energizes me working with people getting people's stuff together is much much more what i'm interested in doing um and and i love help not helping but you know when you're working with someone and editing them and working on them in terms of getting their artwork together and making them understand how you know the little differences elevate someone from being an amateur to being on the pro so you know things like how you look at outlining a, 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 a core character you know give it a thicker line make sure they're standard how they're positioned you know things like that which is your vocabulary and your syntax and stuff and just in your drawing i mean colin i'm a big fan of your work and um you know, I'm sure you would sort of say, you know, there's a way where you realize after years and years and years, but you can also study it. I think you can study it and you can be yeah. shown, you know, and I think people need to get away from that notion when they're a little bit immature thinking, oh, you know, I've got to do it for 20 years. No, <laughs> you don't have to do it for 20 years. If, you, if you're under tutorage and, and you get some really good direction, um, you can do it. I mean, you know, I've worked at animators who show me some stuff that you just go, wow is that how you do it and i and i always wondered how it was done and why it was done and they explain and you go hmm, okay and it's not magic it's just stuff you need to remember and do and practice so you know i've got to say guys so um i've not met you for jeff hi mate and colin not met you either but we were chatting was it yesterday on the phone yeah, yeah. this is so weird <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. Uh, so you, you've agreed to, you you crazy man um you've agreed to sign up and do some work with us yeah that'd be cool yeah I'm i hope so to it. and i found that email you sent me it wasn't that long ago um it was the 25th of april oh was it the one where you sent yours i'm really sorry but that was just in the absolute <laughs> middle of the maelstrom where i was just spinning do you know what i mean doing stuff it was just crazy <laughs> so only now i'm kind of catching breath and going back a bit and looking at my emails and starting to go, oh, now I need to build for issues two, three, and four that I can do it because it was like up to up to publication was just mental, you know. So yeah. uh, how many how many how many comics and stuff have you put through Kickstarter, Jeff? Yeah, that was my first one. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, between February and April, I ran it. Um, that was my first one. It was successful, so I'm I'm quite happy because I know that a large proportion of comics often aren't. So I'm I'm quite happy with it. So yeah, yeah. 
what what and um did you do the whole thing were you kickstarter man i mean in terms of the running the kickstarter and everything um uh, i did everything apart from draw it and letter and um i've got um he, he told me I'd, I, I shouldn't do it, but I'd, I had um, I had an amazing sort of editor <laughs> slash bullshit remover, um, and that Colin was a massive. Oh. Uh, Colin was amazing, and, and basically every decision I made, um, there was an element of like, is that the right thing to do, Colin? Until un, I got un, a bit more confident. Un, about... Uncredited editor. Uh, editor oh, sweet. He actually, um, but I, um, I, I'm going to say about this when it's in here. Actually, um, he, I, I, I asked Colin to put that um, the, the credits page together for me uh, last minute, and um, I actually, all it says here is that it was lettered by Colin. But actually, I think I wrote something like lettered and being an absolute legend, Colin yeah. Maxwell. And, yeah, uh, as, as, as editor, I thought I would take that. <laughs> well, literally. I had no space on any of my pages to put anything in. We've had people come back to us saying, why wasn't there an editorial? Why wasn't there this? Why wasn't there people saying who, who Drew Marr was? And I'm like, I mean, we did not have any space. Well, that's a thank you. Like, yeah, that's the 400 you. names. Like, wow. What's... Okay, Jeff, let's see if you can see this, if my camera's any good. Because he's a young lad, though, Colin. He might not recognize it, right? Wait a sec. Oh, no, don't, don't, don't put me on the spot. Uh, what? What does that remind you of, of, of Jeff? Oh, can you put that a wee bit closer? This, no. is, horrible. No, this is horrible radio. It's That's the splash the first two pages, isn't it? Okay. Um, what does this remind me of? You see, you're a young lad. Yeah. Um, it doesn't, I, yeah, I don't want to... No, you never had it. So, <laughs> all right. So we'll ask someone who's done some editing in his life. Colin, you know what it reminds me of, and you know what it reminds you of, yeah? Does anyone else know? Do you know what it reminds? Oh, tell me, you know, Colin. I've done the well, job. Let, let, let's let's put it because this is live. We might get some some people chipping yeah. in or or on the, the the recording. Let's do it. Yeah. It's, it's likely to get leave it open for people to chip in their answers. Yeah, that's funny. So, uh, without me naming names, because that would spoil it, mm -hmm. <laughs> I then got an email from someone showing me their page two and three. And I went, fuck my life. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. So this may be the last time you ever see me. Oh, okay. Seriously. <laughs> I may be taken behind the, behind the you know, garage and pop, you know? Well, if you're going to be in someone else's guesses. States, then, you know. so, so, Colin, have you seen that, 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 that other comic I'm talking about yet? And I know this is all not very good TV. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I was like, I can understand why it happened, but I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> and uh, I may have some explaining to do, so and <laughs> good luck to me on it, that. Let's face it, it's a great way to introduce the, the stories. You know, you've, yeah. got in there, you've got usually the main characters. Um, it's, it's a great way to do it. Yeah. yeah. I like the fact, so what we did do, um, again, it's like really bad showing stuff up here, but can you, if you open up the Temple Anarchy page, Colin? Mm-hmm. Page oh, yes. five, page four. Do you, what do you think of those little credit boxes? Are they all right? Uh, yeah, I quite like those. Yeah, absolutely. So what we're going to do is we're going to change. We're going to change the seventy-seven color next time. So that's going to go blue, okay? Because you know, I, I like that color. Why are you, why are you making it blue? Yeah, I do. Ah, it's, that's because it's... that's because some some comics used to change their masthead color every week. Okay. And we're doing the same thing. Well, so we've I, done I, the repeat. Yeah. yeah. So this guy, this guy here, yeah, you were showing him. Um, so, so that's by Neil Sims, and I tell you what, I think I'll be getting it. I think I'll be having it hard to keep Neil uh, Neil Sims with us for longer than a year. Yeah, absolutely. That, that um, artwork. He's good, man. That's so he's working with us, and he's unfortunately he's lost. He's not lost his business, but he's a tattooist mm. in. Um, Oh, I can't exactly remember where it is now, man. Near Sheffield, I think, or something like that. And it's the two parlor is locked. So actually, I've got him right time because I'm pushing and pushing and pushing him to produce loads of work. So he's got a new strip coming up um, called Bark, which is kind of like a swamp thing, eco, swampy meets 21st century. 
And he was yeah. writing that with his daughter, and she's a lovely girl. And I think she's 16, 17, and she's writing it, and he's working with her on it, and I'm helping out a bit. And he's done his next strip is with Barry Tomlinson. Awesome. So Barry's written a story for us. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> you think that was like part of, the, um, of this process? Yeah. So you're being like, um, like um, if, well, as it continues, you say you're going to go quarterly. In a couple of years' time, there'll be guys that you've possibly showcased in issues oh. two that you just won't be able to grab for issues eight or nine. Mm. No, I'll, they'll be signing a doc. They'll be signing something. <laughs> they? They'll be a retainer. But no, I mean, basically, you've got this thing that basically saying, so we've got we've got your got your, some of the great talent that you grew up with, mm -hmm. uh, especially when Colin joins us. You know, um, we've got. So we've got stars or, you know, celebrities now or, or well-known creators right now. So we've yeah. got Keck. Um, we've got, um, who we got coming up? PJ Holden's doing something for us. Paul Williams, Steve Austin, you know, people. Um, we've got good writers on board. And, you know, Annie Parkhouse is doing lettering for us. These are people sparing some time. We've got Stuart, uh, Stuart Kenneth Moore's doing a cover for us. So we had Nick... Um, Oh, hang on, Nick Percival. I would have to get up and get this very rare uh, uh, variant edition. So if you just bear with me a second, yeah. you can look at my books while I go and get my other oh, thing. Yeah. Well, for the benefit of those watching on video, I'll do a little flick through of the, the 77. We can see some of the different styles of artwork and stories in there. And really, um, it's it's... Admittedly, it's it's on my reading pile. I've just not got down to it yet. Fair enough. Yeah, you've only got the digital. So what I'll do, Jeff, because you're very nice, I'll send you one. You just give me a dress after. So this Thank you is so now much. sold out, completely sold out. Is this your variant? So we had, we had a few hundred of these done. This is the variant cover by Nick Percival, mm -hmm. and it's completely gone. I mean, just gone. I couldn't believe it. And there are people fighting over it on our Facebook group at the moment going, where are they? Well, the good thing is what we've done is we've left Nick with 50 of them. Because, you know, this is how we do it. He's now got 50 comics that people want, and he's going to better sell them. And I think that's fair enough. You know, that's, incredible. that's, a real, that's, that, that's quite amazing, actually. Yeah, I saw some posting about it on Facebook earlier, yeah. asking if anybody had them. Yeah. So what we're doing is, I mean, Nick knows he's the only person with them, really. Um, <laughs> and when he wants, he can put it out there that he's got them. And I'm telling everybody, and he knows that I'll be contacting him. But he's just it just now. Oh God, yeah. Look, there has to be some equity. We ask, we talk about Kickstarter. Um, we raised a fair sum of money, uh, about over seven thousand, right? But this is sixty-eight pages. You know, this is yeah. sixty-eight pages, and you know, I had to pay an art editor. We've got a brilliant guy. I don't know if you know of Ian Sharman, and oh yeah, I don't know. yeah, uh, good lad, solid. He, I'm, I'm keeping him because he's straight up and he and he sorted me out and he's a good lad. Um, and, you know, we got to pay people to do things. Um, and for some things, we had to obviously make contributions. But we're going to have an equitable share when we've costed everything out of the Kickstarter. So we're having, I think it's around about a grand to 1,500 quid, which is going to be basically on a page rate. Now, that doesn't end up being a lot of money for someone like, you know, Keck. Yeah, I don't know. He must write. He writes eight hours a day. Yeah, mm -hmm. all the stuff he's writing. And I don't know what his page rate is. Um, what do you reckon, Colin? Uh, 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 what do you reckon an artist's pay rate is for 2000 AD these days? I have no idea for 2000 AD. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I think I heard, I think I heard in a panel, Henry Flint said it's 180 quid, 180 quid a page. I don't know. And I don't know whether that's fully rendered, painted. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, but that yeah. depends on the artist as well. And is there not tears with it, even within that? Or do you think there's a, is there a going range? Yeah. I guess so. I guess you have your top pro up and coming and then, you know, your standard low. Yeah. So, I mean, anyway, what I'm saying is what I've learned about the Kickstarter is these comics, you can only sell them for 10p a page and they cost 100 quid a page. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yep. You know, it costs seven quid to sell it, to, to buy this, but it cost me seven grand to make it. That and, 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 and when I was interviewed by a local newspaper, they said to me, why did you do the Kickstarter? And I'm like, well, because I've got no money in my bank account. And, and no one. And when was the last century that anybody went to a bank and got a loan to start a comic? You tell me. I don't think that's ever happened. I th you know, I don't know. I mean, where does the money come from? I mean, John Wagner had to raise twenty-four grand to get Rock of the Reds in. You know, uh, Rock of the sorry, uh, Rock the God. 
Um, you know, Duncan Jones, what's he got? $65,000 now on Maddie. Have you been looking on that? It's the hottest thing on, on, on um, yeah. Kickstarter this week. Yeah. And, and the stars are there. Alex DeCampi is a brilliant writer. I think she is awesome. And, and I don't know all the names, but obviously I know Biz and I know Glenn Fabry. You know, we, we, we tried to get Glenn to do a cover. Um, but you know, commitment means when you can't pay people, what are they going to do when they need work? And then suddenly COVID came along and everyone went, you know, <laughs> but the people who were trying to break it, sorry, people are trying to break, they suddenly had time on their hands and it worked in our favor because they were able to do really good work and commit to it. So in some crazy ways, this has been quite an interesting time to do it. People have said, why did you go ahead and do it when, you know, Space Warp and Rock and all those were pushed back. Well, to be honest with you, because we could, I thought, yeah. you know, it would be making bigger, bigger waves in that big pond than if anyone had had the normal, you know, 60 titles plopping down from Diamond every week. Or you can't get you know. comics, you know, so no. where are you going to go? Kickstarter has been much bigger. Than it's been busy, hasn't it? Kickstarter's been really busy, and it's successful at the moment, which is which is fantastic. You know, yeah. I mean, I wonder if we're seeing a ch not a change or a, or a difference. I don't know enough about history of Kickstarter and what people have done over a few years. I've just got immersed in it in the last year. But you know, equity equity funding and stuff. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I guess if you look back at Eastman Laird, who started off doing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I bet it was their mates and them raised some money. I mean, this is what you always have to do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It was based on, you know, someone saving some money up and starting off and having a go, I guess, you know. I don't think you're ever going to sell, you're going to sell your comic to DC, are you? Your comic to Rebellion. They're not interested in the comic, are they? They, they want IP. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah. I think the worst thing could happen is if someone came along and said to me, we want the comic, because they're not going to take me. They're not, you know, they're not going to take an editor. Why would they take an editor? What have I got to offer them? It's, you know, I think, I think basically, and even if it did sell really well, and even if it continued, I would rather give up my job. I'd rather give up my job, my daytime job, and do and do this job because I'm having so much fun. Honestly, it's it's great. I wake up in the morning and I want to get on with it. You know, I think that what you're saying there quite interesting because I I thought it was kind of, um, admittedly, uh, the, any conversation I have had around this has been has revolved around alcohol but i i, I sat with a uh, barry lumsden um a comic creator up here um recently and we were blethering about um we were blethering about our series and um he intimated that he, you know it's just what you're saying there like oh it's it's, it's about the ip you know they do, they're not interested in people they you they'd be interested in the ip yeah he was um I don't know if this is maybe just different because of where he was coming from in the in, in the industry, but um, and, and I, what I kind of took from him and from other right, you know, isn't just him, just other writers I've spoke to as well, is that um, part of the indie scene for a lot of people is that you create your work, you create a body of work, almost like a portfolio, so that when big people are coming around, kind of, we you're hoping that a, a DC or a Marvel or a or an image are are have got their you know have got their eyes out there they've got they've got their scouts and they're seeing oh we've just seen this really interesting series out in in scotland when you check it yeah out. yeah and it's just i just thought it was interesting there where you were saying about the um whether not being interested in people because i think there's a lot of comic creators out there who are hoping that that is the case um yeah i mean this when you go back to why we call it the 77 it's because we're doing it for ourselves yeah and it's I'm not, and, and you know, you didn't have to be spiky haired and swear a lot and have safety pins in '77 to be a punk. It no, was no. about it was about your attitude. About you could be a dancer, you could be a musician, you could be a artist, you could be a you know starting a business and doing something. But the punk attitude was you saying we're doing it for ourselves, you know. So um, that's that's really I'm not doing it, guys. Is I've just realised I should be uh, copying and pasting my guys in to tell them what I'm doing at the moment. So if you're looking and wondering what I'm doing, I'm actually copying your copying right, your. Um, I feel I do the same thing all the time. I, I do quite a lot of like, oh, I mean, I need to change the banner. Oh, somebody's commented, you know, um, at, um, this is just me being showing off to the um the, the Facebook crowd that who who are. But I just realised I could do this. So we have a comment. Watch this, Colin. This is well cool. Jimmy Brown said, "Hi guys." Oh. <laughs> Technology is wonderful. Oh, that's amazing. How did we do it without it? 
But yeah, um, what are you drinking, Colin? Um, I'm drinking an American IPA from uh, Bad Company. That's the 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 stuff you get in Asda. <laughs> For yeah, well, mine's little. Time. I feel like I feel like as lockdowns continued, some weeks were absolutely outstanding when it comes to our beer choices, yeah. and other weeks it's just like it pish. Must. <laughs> well, I was um, yeah, what I could um, get. I was I was rewatching one of our previous episodes, and we when when we were in when we're together uh, in 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 whatever room we decided to record an episode, and we usually have pre-selected beers and we're really trying our hardest um, <laughs> to, to, to just kind of showcase what, what what we're able to get in the local scene and from uh, from our uh, our local beer, beer shops and stuff like that i mean i i, I I've, before just before recording i just finished this beautiful beer deluxe which oh, you can get in awesome. packs of four for three pound fifty <laughs> um so like I, i've not um, I'm, I'm on this weird sort of balance that, that what, what I'm drinking whether I'm using or really shit. Um, um, I have a. I want to give a, a shout out to the local lads. Um, I'm drinking this amazing 1851 uh, Scottish top hit Tuppenny Ale from Brewshed down Lane Kilns, so not too far away from where me and Colin are um, isolating ourselves. But um, well, it's a bit, that's a big recovery goal for that one. It's it's the quality of the comics this week is what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, one thing I just have to say, mine's has got a little indentation where the badge was. <laughs> oh, when it was when it was posted, you mean? Yeah, because because it came with the seventy seven badge, which was stuck on by Ben. Yeah, everyone was lovingly licked first. You know, you got COVID now, mate. I've already been tested. I've been inflated twice. Yeah, you're going to go down. You're going down. So, um, are you expecting so? Um, so this is the very sorry. This is the very sellotape thing that sellotape that badge down there. Okay, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is the seventy-seven sellotape machine. I need a little badge on this. I tell you. Yeah, yeah it's, good. it's good. Well, um, I'm going to come back and I'm going to try and generate a segue back into some sort of interview here. <laughs> but, um, you know, we uh, we discussed uh, we discussed very briefly the viz earlier. I mentioned um, um, the, the the autobiography of their former editor. One of the things that he talks about quite a lot, which he kind of lost, and it's one of the reasons why he, he eventually left the visit. He sold it on. He gave away his shares or whatever. Um, yeah. Was that um, there was a deadline buzz that they all got. There was like it was basically you know there was two weeks before print date, and that was kind of like their their crazy. They're, they're high pressure, but then the the high of getting it out and getting it there, and um, call me Collins um Collins implied in like something as well like there was that that scary but also amazing button where you clicked uh, to to send your stuff to the printer. Um, yeah. Um. I don't. Did you experience something quite similar with this? I know it's an anthology. Yeah, we had, um, yeah, I mean, I had a couple of Fridays where we were looking for a Friday deadline. We had to get the art off to the editor on a Friday back in April. And then when we got that done, that was just a buzz. And then the following week, he got me the proof. And then that was sent to the distributing printers. And then that was a buzz. And then we obviously got, you know, when, when a guy turned up on the front door for me with a pallet. Um, so we're going through Get My Comics and they're kind of building at the moment a guy called adrian clark and um he's distributing in one respect that you can go on a shop at their shop but i'm obviously fulfilling the kickstarter um so yeah you know it's had it's had those moments and uh, i got the buzz from it um i've also had the kind of come down after a few days um and now i'm getting the where's my comic emails and you know <laughs> facebook stuff but, you know, as I said, we fulfilled 90% of the Kickstarter now. Um, we're waiting on, bless him, Ian Gibson's arm. Uh, he's got a bit of an injured arm, and he's over 70. So two things. He can't sign the posters at the moment because he's got an injured arm. And secondly, we can't get the posters back from him because he's <laughs> he's shielded, you know. So <laughs> what can you do? But you still get people going, where's my Ian Gibson poster? And you're like, hey, man, the world has changed. You know, <laughs> it's just... <laughs> But you got to be nice to everyone, haven't you? Yes. Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> Hi, guys. Courtney Howie. Hey, Courtney. Ian Gibson's poster. That's it. So, yeah, lifeboat. Yay. 
and we're going to have, I mean, we've interviewed him and we've had stuff in our, our, our on our page and stuff before. And um, he's a good fella, isn't he? Loved him. Always loved his Halo Jones and Slade and, sorry, Sam Slade and Robo Hunter and stuff. And um, hero of mine, as a kid, um, I knew I'd never be Brian Bolland. I knew I never would be. I thought I was better than Mick McMahon as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and probably wanted to, you know, sleep with Dean Gibson because he drew lovely ladies. You know what I mean? He's a he's a hell of a draftsman. Um, but you know, as you get older, I actually probably feel more akin to Mick McMahon because he is just a beast. His his stuff is just the best. Still is, still is the best. Um, but you know, spoke to him. But of course, he's doing. Um, was it Joe's Killer Dad, Killer Robot Dad with um, Sam Reed? And uh, Steve Stelacani, is it Stelacani? The guy who does lots of modeling and um, robots and stuff. Okay, anyway, these guys I meet at Thought Bubble and such like, so that's what Mick McMahon's doing. But yeah, it's been a real buzz, definitely. Um, have you got, have you got a, I know you said you've, you've, you've tied up most of your guys now for future, at least your immediate future issues. Have you got, have you got a wish list of guys you want to work with or you're hoping to work with? Uh, that's a really good question. I've actually got a whole load of people saying, don't get loads of new people because we want to keep our jobs. <laughs> of course, yeah. And they're proving themselves worthwhile. You know, we've got a core of people and, and I want to keep them. Um, do you know, I've never really thought of it in terms of what, how I would sectionalize how many people were doing what in the comic. But I would like to say if we got three, three bands, you know, same. You're old school the present and the future, you got to have 68 pages. You'd have to have what? 30, what's that? 30 pages? No, not 30, 20, 20 pages of each, isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's going to end up like that, but um, I don't just necessarily want to hire people or, or, or have people along who, you know, once were, once were quite well known and not doing much now and looking for any opportunity, but um, no, I mean, be brilliant to break people. Absolutely brilliant. And I say Neil Sims is definitely one of those. I've got a guy, he's um, coming along um, at Kiwi called Brendan Wright. And he did the Steve uh, McManus story inside. Um, and it was nice to have um, Tharg with us. You were talking earlier about someone next to you. There we go. Tinkling triangles. Okay. And he's a Kiwi. So we have weird conversations starting about three o'clock in the morning. And I'm writing comedy strips with him at scripts at the moment with him. And you need someone to bat off. You do. When you're writing comedy, you can't do it. I don't think you can do it on your own. Yeah, you need to tell the joke. You need to find it funny or not funny. And then you need to improvise on it. And then you need to send it back. And then they got to do. And then you go, what was the joke about in the beginning? And what was the funny part of it? And when it's a comic, how many bubbles are you going to have? Or strip, mm -hmm. how many panels is it going to be over? Anyway, so he's coming along really, really lovely. Um, and we had from this guy, so uh, Brendan, we had a submission. So if anyone wants to submit, the 77 comic submissions at gmail.com. Okay. And we're looking at everything. I have taken someone tonight's work. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> you know, I spent yesterday four hours, eventually went down my list and got to Colin. Okay. So I got to Colin eventually. That's not true at all, Colin. I spent yesterday four hours on the phone and four hours on the internet getting hold of people and trying to juggle and work out who's doing what and when they're going to do it and who's free when. Anyway, Brendan, would you would you submit something you'd done twenty years ago and not done anything in between? He what? did. He did, and it was rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> but the other guys said no that's rubbish and i went yeah it's rubbish but there's something i like about it and that was what i thought i thought the guy can tell a story that was the first thing you can tell a story the polish and everything else i think anyway i didn't know he hadn't done anything for 20 years since i got chatting to him anyway in the preceding four months he's done now about 30 pages not stuff that's going to be published but reworking and going over and new stuff it's coming along nicely i feel like a graphics wow. teacher again teaching someone you know so uh, it's really good. To kind of get I'm looking, I can't hear you there, uh, Colin. I'm just saying it must be quite a buzz for him as well, kind of getting back in the saddle. You, and I think you should yeah. be applauded for that as well. There's an element of um, you've inspired somebody, I think, on some level to to get back into something or to to motivate something. You know, you know. Okay, so we put adverts out, mm -hmm. and I don't know what people don't understand when you said comic or sequential comic illustrator required 
and you get graphics people yeah i do posters i do three panels you don't do three panels mate you know comic strip is a comic is four pages plus yeah it really is it is and anyway i've had a lot of stuff come to me and i've had to kiss a lot of frogs you know so i'm using a special cream you know it's good it's good uh, I had to do a couple today of thank you very much. Your work was nice, but didn't meet my fulfillment. I always say though, get back to me. Honestly, if you if you, if you haven't been completely broken by my, you know, rejection, um, I don't know about you, but I never even got a bloody letter from 2000 AD. Yeah, I never got anything back ever. I know other people go, oh, I got a really nice letter saying I should do this, this, and this, and I'm going to be that guy. I'm not a professional, but I'm going to be that guy and say, I think you should. I think you should do this and this. Or get back to us when you know what sequential artwork is, rather than just sending you know pictures of, I don't know, the latest X Men thing. Yeah. yeah, I don't, you know. Anyway, so I saw, and so Brendan is like, he seems to be taking it on board. It's really nice. We have lovely conversations, and he's just someone I can work with. And then there's other people who, I don't know, Neil Sims, this guy. Wow, what can I say? I mean, he's he, he can go various ways. Uh, he's doing a black and white for Barry uh, Tomlinson. Um, he's also going to start his new one called Bark. Uh, he's going to be that's going to be an ongoing strip. Um, and then I'd have to look. So we had John Charles and um, Tom Newell. So they're Techno Freak. Okay, and that's out in its own right. Tom Newell is now 2000 AD. It's gone. It's gone. 2000 AD. So John's now looking for an artist. You know, it's just like, it's good. When, when it happens, it's brilliant. When someone goes. Um, but anyway, so you asked a question at the beginning here, Jeff. Where are we? Uh, up to issue five. Well, so um, if, if, if everybody, if if everybody was to deliver, if everyone was to deliver and no one was to pull out and everything was acceptable, I could go to issue five and print it. Um, but that doesn't mean there's not stuff which is going to go wrong and, 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 and be pulled or whatever. Yeah. Um, but, you know, and the fact is we advertised. So we did some adverts out and those people replied. And then I said for scripts, and I reckon I got five times as many scripts submissions as I did art. Because I think everybody thinks they can write, and very few people know they can draw. Uh, the problem with a lot of artists is they don't think they can, and they give up. So, you know. Yeah. I, think, I, think I think as well, you're, po you're possibly, the, the, there's an element of you offering, am I right in thinking that the process is that people write in scripts and you'll sometimes match them with an artist? Is that is that part of the process? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And quite <laughs> early on, mate, and quite early on, I get the writer or the team together. I let mm. them discuss it. You know, yeah. I don't kind of like take over and say, there's no way, you know, you, you're not involved in this. I kind of think that we're grown-ups here and that maybe people can have their own conversations with each other and get to know each other a little bit. And that's so strange, isn't it? When you hear the old timers have a chat, they never met up. I listened to the Brian Bolland and Mick McMahon, sorry, Mick McMahon and um, Ian, G uh, sorry, Dave Gibbons the other night, the 2000 AD podcast. Yeah. They never met. I mean, they, they were different. That team met. Yeah. But, you look at other groups in other times and other comics and, and, and they never, never, ever met up and they were never sort of, you know, never encouraged to do so. And I'm thinking, well, in the time of COVID where we can't meet up anyway, at least let's have conversations. At least let's mm -hmm. have uh, on our Facebook group open access to people can chat to each other and what have you. Um, and I'd like to think that some of these people are more than just colleagues. You know, they're friends. So that's that's really nice. I bet I don't keep all of them as friends, though. That's really great because um, even my experiences working with uh, on Commando is I just submit a script, maybe yeah. get some, some, maybe get a little bit of feedback or something, but then the next thing I know is I'm just getting some samples of artwork back. But there's no there's no two back and forth between me and the artist or anything. It's just yeah. No, I've under. learned a lot. Yeah, so I've learned a lot in the last few months just looking at how Keck works because he ties me in, copies me into all the emails. And how him and his um, artist work, yeah, I'm working with, he's working with Connor Boyle, um, with uh, Owen Coveney, and with a new artist for us. And every time he has the same approach. He, he doesn't always develop the story to begin with. He won't have it developed. If someone wants it, he'll, he'll put a pitch in and then he writes it. Because, you know, he's got it up here. It's all in his head. Yeah, he knows his stuff. And he goes through and he does characterizations and he does setups and he does all sorts of things and sends them stuff 
and loads of links and kind of encyclopedia links about this is the look and he's not telling him how to do it he's just saying this is what i think this is how i see it yeah. you know and then they've got a reference haven't they and i'm thinking that's good very good um so i hope that people have those conversations but yeah i think some people are very shy aren't they or very private and other people are a bit more exhibitionist and a bit more upfront. so you know um have you ever had a have you ever had a situation then uh colin where having met someone you realized and you don't don't say don't say who it is you didn't like them <laughs> you met them and then you didn't like them and actually when you worked with them you thought it was all good um actually no it's a very, it's a very naughty question i no, I've but i am drinking so you know no i've i've um anybody that i've either worked with or kind of revered or whatever and i've met i've always been great and have exceeded expectations it's usually been me that's been a bit kind of nervous and shy and they probably thought this guy's a dick <laughs> i got drunk on this, i got drunk on this in this boat in bristol the connection being that i i sat in simon bisley's seat and when he turned up i went who are you <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, Mr. I'm Mr. You know, don't you know? I'm like, nope, ain't got a clue, mate. I mean, I knew Simon Bisley was, you know. Awesome. I mean, I'm exactly the same age as him. You know, I was doing robots like he was doing when he was 16. But, you know, some people have all the breaks, eh? So there we go. So, uh, you know. But, um, no, he's a good guy and all that. But I don't know. You meet some people and it's just like, wow, yeah. You know, I think you must work on your own a lot. I can tell people who work on their own a lot, you know. <laughs> Uh, so are you full time now, Colin? I mean, do you do? Oh no! Oh, oh absolutely no? not! Absolutely no, I'm, not! I'm, I'm, I'm in education as well, so it doesn't mean I have lots of holidays. Have you not yet qualified? Then you're still in education. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Forever a student. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, I I teach part time graphics, and um, I only started telling the kids in the last few weeks, or not weeks, but the last few months, what I was doing. Some of them. Yeah. The kids who I thought, you know, they're the they're the quiet manga reading ones, you know, they're the ones who are good at doing drawing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't I don't tell my students at all, but because a lot of them go to the same local comic shop as me, they will usually see me there, and then the word will spread around, you know. Oh, he does comics, or they'll see one of my books on the shelf. That's interesting because um, all my kids know what I like. Um, just a. Uh, Hi, just I don't know if I just work with nosy or teenagers, but all my kids seem to know all my nonsense. Like I don't necessarily wander around like, or I've got colleagues that are like you'd never know what Mister Nicholson did last week. <laughs> but uh, no, that that is interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I use I use comics a lot, and I use a lot of columns, particularly your historical comics. I use I use them I use them as teaching aids for a lot of the sort of the learners I work with. Um, so that um, I use I use my love of comics as a really as a as a, as, a, as quite a strong bridging tool. I suppose that my my in my job I'm having to um, I'm having to you know before the teaching can happen the relationship needs to get built. And the studio's I, moving, mate. That's all. Um, I, um, yeah, we're going, we're going around. I, I think what's amazing about comics and being a, a comic <clears> nerd is it removes any. I work with a lot of children that are dealing with. Um, that uh, maybe had not had the best relationships with adults to a point, and then all of a sudden I've been kind of dropped into their life. As, Are you in a PRU or in a special school? Um, no, I work in a local high school, but I work in people's oh, support. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm supporting a West Fife's sort of... Um, okay. I, I support West Fife's young, young people who, who maybe need a little bit more support for whatever reason. Um, and being a massive comic nerd seems to be quite a, a, quite an effective tool. Because mm -hmm. it removes any kind of, you know, the wor wor worst case scenario, we can chat about Netflix or, yeah, like what was on the telly the night before, and that just it just seems to work, you know. And it remove it removes any kind of, it removes any kind of fear from the situation because like, oh, Mr. Nixon, he's just a comic nerd, so he he's, he poses no threat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, I had a question there, and then I, I totally lost it. I apologise. Um, Wait, is this this gets edited later, right? No, <laughs> no, 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 the audio will, the audio will, um, if I can be bothered. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I'm just um, it's just really nice to have you with us. Um, You're welcome. You're welcome. So yeah, we I'm, were. Um, let me see. We we're talking about 
comic artists and people we work with. And I then well, was... Yeah, that was kind of what I was thinking. That, I know where I'm going now, sorry. Um, I thought it was quite interesting you said that you, you're receiving more writer entries than artist entries. Yeah. And, um, I noticed when I was trying to put together my comic that um, that uh, when, when you're on a lot of social media pages designed to, to, to make that connection there's a there's actual facebook there's a facebook page that colin invited me to that's called like connecting ad, ad, connecting comic artists with comic writers um i noticed it, there, there, there's a disproportionate amount of writers looking for artists rather there you know there's very few artists jumping up and going i need a writer um, and I, I wonder if i wonder if the link with you with, with the 77 is that a lot of writers are seeing the opportunity to have some of their work drawn because artists are quite expensive as well and and you're having to um and often i don't know i, I, I don't know where this dichotomy seems to have come from but it, t- it tends to be writers paying to have their work drawn rather than artists looking to have their skill pay to have the right to draw someone's work i know where you're coming from yeah. But often what I would say to a writer is tell me who you would like to have drawing it. I don't mm-hmm. mean I'm getting that person because they're not going to answer the phone to me. But what I mean is I want to know what style they want. What do they envisage it? When they've written it, yeah. what do they think? What are they seeing? You know, and then they say, because I get I get I do get a lot of submissions of artwork as well. I've got to say, I've probably got about 50, but I just seem to have loads more writers. And and they always pitch a series. It's like, <laughs> why are you pitching a series? You know, we'll start with four pages. <laughs> Let's do four pages first, you know. Um, I've got, you're going to have to help me out with the guy's name. I'm sure he's a Scot. Nigel Ochlatoni? Ochtaluni. Ochtaluni. He's a Beano guy, yeah? Yeah. Ochtaluni. He's done this great cartoon. I always show it to people. It's a three-panel setup. So one panel, two down. And it's at some convention. So there's a panel, there's a two panel. There's, there's, the, there's, there's the guy doing the, there's the, there's the writer and the artist. And it's Space Bash or Space... Anyway, that's the name of their comic. Hang those up in the audience. So the, the, the premise is along the lines of, um, why do you like comics? Why do you like working in comics the, to the writer? And the writer goes, well, that's simple. Because it says the budget is exactly the same as if I want, you know, a thousand spaceships coming out of hyperspace, ravaging a planet, you know. And the artist goes, I'm going to kill you! You know, it's just, you know, because they just want headshot, headshot. You know, it's just... <laughs> but it's like that. The writer can say what they want and dream up what they want. It's left to the poor bugger of the artist to actually realise it and do it. And um, you know, hats off to them. I'm uh, I'm very very impressed. And I had that I had that today in in insofar as and and, I, and I'm not going to say who it was, but I had a pro who I approached, and he's going to do something for us. And then you know, the writer approached him and said what he wanted to do, and and then you know what he's going to do would be something different because you know he's busy and he can't quite do the um, huge. Thing that you know the writer wanted him to do which is understandable and um you know i'm just i'm in a position where i'm just grateful that people are doing stuff yeah i gotta be yeah. honest with you i just feel incredibly grateful all the time um but yeah you said also earlier who who, who would i like to have on there so god oh, let me see now who would i really 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 like i do you know there is someone and i would like to get someone back into comics and I think he had a bit of a hard deal. And whenever I've heard him speak or spoken to him or seen his writing, David Pugh. Do you know David Pugh? Did yeah. Slane when Slane was about Prague 400. Okay. He I did the time that. travel one where he ended up with the Cylons and Cythons and stuff. And oh, so he God. did about 20, 20 issues, I think, or 30 issues of Slane and then got sacked because someone else was doing it or something. And it was a conversation that never got hat and he never was in the office when the conversation was, and he only found out speaking to someone else at a convention and they were the new artist and he felt really, you know, and, he, and the way you found out was by a guy admitting the fact that he was the replacement. And it was just like, geez. And anyway, don't forget, you know, David's fine. He's living in Thailand and he's got a nice life uh, and he's retired and he's writing. He's called, um, Dharma, Dharma Pew or something. Anyway, he's got a writing name and he's writing novels and stuff. Anyway, I did contact him when he was trying to sell some work through our site. He was selling lots and lots of slain and he also did something for Wildcat. I can't remember what it was now, but quite a lo- the Lona. Lona, was it? Or something for Wildcat? And he was selling all his artwork. And I said to him, mate, I've got this project coming up. Would you be interested? 
And he said, well, it's almost like you've slapped me around the face. You know, we were getting on fine. And then you asked the question that I just don't want to, to, to do. He just, you know, honestly, it would make him run a mile if he was asked to draw again. And that's interesting, isn't it? That someone can do something for a long time. Yeah. And then it goes so completely the opposite way that they would never want to do it again. I thought that was fascinating to have the ability. And I think it happens with musicians and stuff sometimes. You know, Hendrix always said, I'm not a jukebox. That Everyone always wanted, hey, Joe, yeah, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I think you get that with Oasis and things, didn't you? They all did end up saying, we don't want to play that stuff. We want to play our new stuff. But people only want to know the hits, don't they? So, you know, um, God, who would I? I don't know. You see, the thing is, this is where I put my hand up. I don't read a lot of contemporary comics at the moment. I really don't. I, I'm busy. I've got a profession. I've got a job and I've got other things to do. Um, I've got people who keep me informed of what's going on and, and what to buy. But the newest book I'm getting is Omnibus 3 of Sandman. Yeah. I never bought the series after those issues. So I've always wanted to know how it ended. I got the first 50 and then I never really got the next lot. I like the Mike Drugenberg stuff and, and that. Um, so I want to know how it kind of ended, really. And 60 quid, I get a thousand pages. I don't think that's a bad deal, really. But, you know, I don't know about Colin. Did you get Sandman? Did you buy all that um, Vertigo no, stuff? It was stuff that I kind of missed out on. And more recently, I started reading a bit of it. Um, but it's not. See, I was totally story. into Hellblazer and stuff like that. I re it kind of really got me. And that was my, my swamp thing was my crossover from about 1984, 85. Started buying. I was reading Cerebus. And uh, then Sankovitz, Sankovitz um, or Sakenovitz, sorry. Um, and, 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 you know, started going over. Obviously, Watchmen was like, you know, huge. And, and, and by then, 2000 AD for me, around about 87, I was just like, meh, you know, really wasn't. I know I missed some good stuff. And I, and I, I bought lots of Judge Dredd um, trade paperbacks and stuff since. You know, I love it. And I do like quite a lot of other stuff. But you tell me about Rogue F Trooper Friday. Not a clue, mate. Ain't got a clue. Ain't got a clue. And everyone goes on about it. I'm like, ain't got a clue. <laughs> I don't know. I know the original Gibbons, you know, and that was brilliant. So, yeah, Dave Gibbons, that's who I want to work. So, Dave, you've got a minute. Yeah. You've got a minute. Come and do something for the 77, mate, because your stuff <laughs> rocks, you know. <laughs> yeah. Nice stream. Yeah. Know, we've been joined, the, again, this is crap radio and crap telly. <laughs> we, we've been joined by Brendan in the studio. So, um, it's Brendan Wright. Yeah, I believe yeah, so. Yeah, be kind to him because it's actually eight o'clock in New Zealand. Oh, right. Um, I, Is he I, on I, I've asked if he wanted to join us. And I've asked if he wanted to join us. And he, he, he I think he's a bit hesitant. But um, Yeah, go on, Brendan. Unless Ben wants to ask ask him anything specifically. Yeah, I do. Brendan, what do you think of my... Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. <laughs> can indeed. <laughs> can you hear me? Hey, Brendan. What did you think of my suggestions about those speech bubbles then? Ah, uh, good, good. Yep, I am. Um... Yeah, is that okay, guys, if we have a bit of an editorial discussion right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Colin's going Colin's to hold up um, a page on the comic for reference. Uh, yeah. Good about Brendan. So, yeah, so I um, had a chat with Filippo today, another fellow Scott. We know we got two Scots above you in the, on the screen, That's yeah? Good. So, Filippo... Hey, guys. Yeah, so Filippo's agreed that we're going to have nice regular speech bubbles, all white, yeah. none of this coloured in stuff, okay? Yeah. And they need outlines. Yeah, well, the, the thing that was interesting is um, because my writing... Sorry about the Kiwi accent. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah my, my writing um, process, which, of course, uh, Ben's had to bully me into because I prefer not to write, um, but it involves tweaking the bubbles as I as I draw and so um, I, I, by the time I finished the, uh, the the strip I've got a, a fully lettered rewritten story and I get a bit fixated on those and um, you know it's the old diva prima donna thing and we've got this excellent letterer and um, so I was so fixated on these bubbles that I said can you really go the ex just do something spectacularly over the top and blow my socks off, and so he did. So he uh, he put uh, in. Um, so you're taking, the, you're taking the blame. You're taking the rap on this, are you? Oh yeah, I told him to get experimental. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <he's> free form. <laughs> yeah, and so he did, and he tried all sorts of um, fancy things out, and some of them were really good. So um, I think what'd be interesting, Brendan, is why didn't you sort of tell everybody what our process is? Because we're about as far apart as you can get, aren't we? 
because you're in New yeah. Zealand. Yep. So during uh, during your winter, we're 13 hours ahead of you. And during your spring summer, we're only 11 hours ahead of you. So, uh, what days so are you on, Brendan? Today it's oh, cool. What is it? Friday? <laughs> I can't is remember it what it's it down for you as well, Brendan. So, you're locked in as well. Yeah? Well, I, I work from home, so uh, I've never, <laughs> never been sure of the days of the week. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, so, so, um. I feel I work on the computer screen all day, drawing, doing stuff for clients, and and um, when I feel very really lucky, I'm working for Ben, and uh, I get caned pretty early in the day, um, and so I I head to bed early, which means that reduces the hours that we can actually communicate even even less. <laughs> yeah, you usually wake up to a message board just full of stuff, don't you? Yeah, yeah, and I usually wake up reasonably late, so. <laughs> oh, living the dream so you joined me on our uh, launch party didn't you the zoom launch party we had yeah 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 that was it uh, four o'clock in the morning for us who else was on that on one of those panels um who was there Filippo was there yeah um steve mcmanus was there as well wasn't he he was to start with yes yeah he was, was drinking really cool. what was he drinking i can't remember what he was drinking guinness, was guinness. It, it was guinness it was guinness yep. was it oh yeah guinness. this time yep <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely so and we um, had drew we had young drew as well ah well the guys they, they know drew yeah yeah we've, we've had him on the show before um colin has met him multiple times. oh fantastic he's a good guy and well, neil um, neil had been um at it for a while uh on <laughs> neil sims on, yeah yeah and <laughs> he had to keep apologizing to drew because <laughs> he wasn't filtering <laughs> <laughs> well the difference is the difference is uh brendan tonight is I, I i've been having a couple as well so i've i've already landed a couple of you know things which will probably get edited out of the audio later brilliant you suggest that as if like i'm professional enough to just to do what you're suggesting just to <laughs> yeah so brendan um you've you've done some work in the 77 is there any other think pieces in the comics sphere that you've done that we can check out uh well actually i i um had some stuff published in the early 90s uh no sorry late 90s in a um new zealand fanzine and which i'd been i it think i spent good. about 10 years on it producing it and then um i just i just got so disillusioned with comics that i even stopped reading them after that so I haven't produced anything until Ben discovered me. Yeah, I've already mentioned the fact you sent us an old strip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I've, I've been I, I wrote it when I was eighteen, and um, I, I've been trying to rewrite it so that it uh, so that it's current. But uh, uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think it works rewriting old stuff. Yeah, no, you, yeah, you write these things and. Um... You write these things in a, in a, if I, I can imagine what anything I would, I wrote even five or six years ago would look like in where I am now. Imagine mm -hmm. just, you, you're almost a different person in terms of like your values and your, um, yep, and, and, and the way you apply thinking even to, to the world. It would be quite, yeah. that, mu that must be quite a challenging experience for you, um, trying to look at something that you wrote. Do you, mm. do you coach? Do you, are you amazed? Are you excited by what you've written? uh the old stuff was a bit embarrassing um uh, yeah it was just embarrassing some of the artwork was nice <laughs> um but i've tried to yeah tried to write it all, rewrite all of the dialogue as if as if i'd written it now but that, a lot of the artwork's still old and uh i don't know <laughs> if i ever if i ever uh uh if i ever become world world now and perhaps i'll Put it in some kind of archive and sell it for cheap. <laughs> so you wrote. Uh, we've already discussed it. You wrote, not wrote. Sorry, you illustrated the Tinkling Triangles, which uh, is in the issue one. Yes. So, uh, do you want to talk a little bit about your new project? Yeah, the new project I love. It, well, first of all, it started. Um, so I've been an illustrator. I was a window cleaner for twelve years, which is <laughs> all, all a, an artist musician is uh, is worth, of course. We we know that's not true, but. It um, can be quite hard to get get uh, accepted for your skills. So eventually, I 
quit window cleaning and went back to Polytech and um, came out uh, supposedly a graphic designer, but I um, went illustrating instead. So I've been doing that for 14 years now. And so about five or six years back, I thought I want to try a bit of animation. So oh, yeah. uh, mm. so there's a there's a thing on you can look up on, on YouTube called the Fracar at the Space Cafe. Uh, it's Fracar, F-R-A-C-A-S. And um, so it was an excuse to try animation out, which I did, decided I don't want to do it again. Uh, but... Um, <laughs> Uh, it, it was an so I wrote a song which was an excuse to draw uh, space, spaceships, fifties cars, uh, curvy girls, uh, big guns, American sheriffs, anything I wanted to draw. There's even a an Elvis in there juggling burning oranges at one stage. But anyway, so <clears throat> mind the oranges, Elvis. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh man you yeah see, yeah so, that's that's why we're a team yeah that's why we're a team i yeah, come up yeah, with a good line right. yeah you do yeah we had a good good chat last night about where the story's going anyway so uh that i i i provided my early stuff and um ben and team said nah and uh they asked me to audition for uh for steve's book story which was good and then after that well, actually, interestingly, it was a four story to start with. And they said, Oh, let's make it a five story. So I sort of thought, Okay, I'm gaining favor here. And then after that, he said, um, Can you do a six story one with uh, with another character? And so I, I um, suggested the, the character that I had from the animation. Um, so, long way around. Um, he is called Martian Law, which is a takeoff of Pat Mills and Kevin and Eels. Title. I checked with Pat, and he thought it was okay. <laughs> Which is, um, it was very, very short reply, but, um, but it was good. He, um, and so, Sheriff O'Martian, Marty O'Martian of Mar of Martian County, um, <laughs> and and um, so he's a he's a 1950s cop, and he drives a a 1950s police car, which is a sort of a souped up 60s, well, a 50s thing. Um, it's got rockets in the back instead of instead of tail lights, but uh, so he he, um, he just drives around. He's he's an old fashioned guy, so he's like an ex World War Two guy, except the future version of. <laughs> and uh, so he's he's pretty easy about easy going. You know, he doesn't like people swearing, doesn't like people kissing in public, but but he'll let kids get away with BB guns and. Riding without a cycle helmet. What's Ben doing? This is the most bizarre. Uh, I'm going to <laughs> remove Ben from the street. He's actually moving furniture as we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so it's, it's just a story. It's just. I'm um, going to be right back. I'll just let you guys chat if that's alright. <laughs> okay. I, I'm actually not even sure who I'm talking to. I haven't been I'm introduced. Bored. Oh, g'day, Colin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so the story. I'm, I'm actually quite enjoying it. Uh, it, it's, it's when you are ten and naive, you had a view on the world, and it's kind of a look yeah. back to that. So, I haven't even decided yet if people die in the story or if they just go ow. Um, yeah. But the first story is all finished and written, and uh, yeah, I. Really, really looking forward for people to seeing that. That's superb. It's interesting that you've come from a sort of animation background because my first comic book that I did, it was actually a script that I had for an animation, well, kind of mixture live action animation thing. Nice. And then, you know, I'd applied for some funding and got a little bit of money, but not enough really to do the whole thing. So we did a bit of the project. And then um, I, th I, I discovered this student of mine who was into drawing comics. And I says, why don't we turn this into a comic book? And that was it. Yeah. And that was what seven years ago, and now, um, yeah, twelve. Fantastic. Years later, and it's uh, crazy. So, so um, because yeah. I'm I'm completely new to everything here. What what? So what comic are you have you worked on? Um, I, mostly my own stuff. I've had some uh, mostly independent stuff that I've done. 
Um, I, I quite like war comics. Mm. So I've done a couple of true war stories recently. Um, and then I got picked up by um, the Scottish publisher, DC Thompson, who do mm. Commando. So right. I'm writing for Commando just now. So That's my fantastic. stories won't be out, out until later in the year, I think. But ah. I've just seen some previews of some of the artwork just this last week. So quite looking ah. forward to coming out. And then That's exciting. by chance, Ben phoned me yesterday and was asking me about possibly doing one of the stories on the 77. Yes. And then we were expecting Steve Bull to be joining us tonight, but it was Ben that turned up. So, ah, coincidence. Just one of those things. Eh? So can I explain why that is? That's because of my really bad IT skills. And Steve is signing out on the Gmail account and I answered all my mess. I literally, I've commissioned everybody in the last month a Steve Bull, and I only found out today. So it's you I've been talking to, thinking I've been chatting to Steve. <laughs> it must be really confused, because I added him to a, a, a group chat and on Facebook with me and Colin and everything. He's probably just been like, what's going on? Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, well, <clears throat> there we go. So uh, that, ex that explains a lot. Anyway, guys, you wanted to know what was going on there. I don't think you should tell us what happened. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just make up our own stories. <laughs> anyway, where were we? Oh yeah. So we were um we were still guessing. So Brendan, yeah, you haven't received you haven't received your comic yet, have you? Although the New Zealand no. contingent are getting 35 shipped over, right? Apparently hmm. Bram Bram, what's his name? Wiggle w Wigglesworth. Wigglesworth, he runs a group in New Zealand. So can yeah. you say, I don't know if he's allowed to say yet, are we still guessing, guys, what that comes from? Have we had any answers? Uh, we haven't had any answers. I don't actually even, I'm not, I'm not going to lie, I don't even think I have 100% understanding. Right. Brendan, because um, Jeff's, Jeff's, Jeff's only 25, I reckon, you know, he's a, wee, he's a nipper. Um, do you know what it's come from, Brendan? I don't. I'll put it you don't oh god well they're not gonna we're not gonna answer it we're gonna leave it then because me and colin are like yeah we know but there we go that's all right it's only because we're really old yeah <laughs> well can i tell you what it reminds me of and i don't know if i'm gonna be right or wrong right but when um in the early 90s in the uk there used to be no we're not even there no that used to exist on a Friday afternoon on CITV in like 1992, they did like a, a splash page intro to the to the show. But then, oh, right. was, great. Maybe, maybe, maybe the zap thing, maybe the zap thing was inspired by whatever it is you guys are talking about. I don't know. That was Neil. I'd have to speak to him. No. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna break it now. I'm gonna say. So it's from the first two pages of 2000 AD. Ah. Okay. The contents pages which means that some other magazine comic which is going to come out later in the year has got the same thing in it and i'm like well that'll be notorious that'll be a fame that'll be a claim to fame so, but, so when, you, when you see that are you referring to the um are you referring to the layout of having like a, a picture mm. from each strip in on on that page is that is, is it the, the format right. you're so can you see the curve can you see, right can you see this curve well, i'm doing this mirrored now this curve here this shape the yeah. black shape above, yeah and then the three panels basically and then on the okay. other side can you see the curve can you see the curve there is a curve that goes across the page and etc yeah 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 well we we had to change it slightly um if i got my prog one out of 2000 ad you'd see it but I, it's in the bottom of a box and i'm not doing it and that's the whole reason for this as well for the badge mm. and i've had a few people today say i had to peel the badge off and i'm like yeah you're lucky we didn't the get it printed on paper, <laughs> paper because there'd have been a nice tear across the middle of it like we yeah. had yeah. so everyone got it pretty quite good oh and and sorry um brendan you haven't seen this bad boy have you oh, i've only seen photos of it yeah it i know lovely. you're only ever going to see photos of it mate that's it you know so there yeah. we go <laughs> i like the shine on it it looks delicious yeah i know no one can see what anyone's seeing it's so shiny it's so shiny but inside the map paper what did you think colin was the map paper okay yeah absolutely i thought i like the feel of it you know, yeah what about the 
Did you like the smell of it? Did you like the smell of it? The new comic smell, but I, I did like the feel of it, yeah. And it, it, yeah, they're all shiny, aren't they? They're not too clean. That's something like, I think, when I, when I was doing printing last week, or the week before, sorry, like when, I, when I was trying to get my, like, put my comic to the printer, that was, like, I think probably the last question of several thousand that I had to throw Colin's way over the course of the last couple of months. Yeah. But that was that. I was like, oh, my God, like, what, what the fuck's page finishing? <laughs> like, what's it? Um, what, Lambda or whatever? It's, yeah. it's essential. And uh, Colin gave me some good advice, and the inside of my comic feels amazing. Um, as does the inside of all Colin's comics. So, indeed. So, Brendan, do you smell old comics? Uh, I used to smell of old comics. <laughs> no, no. Do you smell them? Do you pick up an old comic and have a real old? Oh, it's well. It smells it's like, it smells like victory. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's actually interesting. My entire collection is uh, in my twenty. He's twenty-two, not twenty-one. In my twenty-two-year-old's room. Under his desk, so I, I actually uh, haven't looked at those for a long time. Right. Mm. What were you? What did you buy when you were a kid, then, Brendan? Well, uh, when I was ten, uh, it was two thousand AD onwards. But before that, um, it was just random DCs and Marvels, and a lot of black and white reprints of those. Because, of course, yeah, you had always got the reprints and the repackaged stuff, right? I take it two thousand mm -hmm. AD came over pretty much in the same form that we bought it as well. Exactly, yep, yep. Um, New Zealand and Australia were um, early markets for the BBC, so we had Doctor Who right from the first episode, which was unusual around the rest of the world, but it looks like we had the same with a lot of the British comics back in those days, especially 2000 AD. And what was it like working for Tharg? Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> amazing it was amazing were you nervous when i told you it was uh no because because i'm here in new zealand imagine like as you as you said like um one of the just before you you, you joined us brendan we talked a lot about like um the importance almost of like the, the um and something that's quite unique about um, the, the 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 seventy seven process compared to other processes is that you that that you've encouraged to work with your writer uh, and mm -hmm. our, and artists have been encouraged artists have been encouraged to work with the writers and writers have been encouraged to form like a a relationship and a, and and a bond as part of that process. So, from what it sounds like, Bensky's not told you that you've been forming a friendship with Tharg until until you'd had that initial sort of set of conversations. Yeah, pretty much. It was I and um, I, can't, I can't actually remember. Um, I was asked to audition for something, but I wasn't sure what it was until I got the script. That's what it was. Yeah, and his name was at the top of the script. I think. Well, wow. anyway, yeah. <laughs> but uh, um, I was also asked to work with uh, Filippo, our letterer, and I I found that hard because I don't like being important and telling people what to do yeah. so so uh, that was that was hard um but at the same time i don't necessarily Filippo and i don't know each other well yet and so we don't have a an automatic uh, feeling for how we like to do things mm. so um so we're, we're sort of still getting to know each other and and um and i oh, come on, he, yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, just have to get over the, uh, the the fear of discussing things that can be <laughs> upsetting. Well, you know, that's why I didn't want anything of mine in the comic, because I didn't <laughs> want there to be that editorial decision that it was crap. You know, it was... Uh, <laughs> it's not easy telling other people that I don't have to do that, because it's not. But uh, we were yeah. chatting about your work today, and it's, it's interesting, Brendan, that... Basically, it does seem that people are really generous. You know, if you approach it in a certain way and you critique work, I think people are always much, much happier to be told how they can improve stuff. I think that's really what it's all about. Um, you're yeah. talking really three, three teachers here, so that's kind of our job to help people develop and improve, really. So, um, you know, mm. Mm. that's what I think. You know, and how does yeah. window cleaning help? How does window cleaning help a, 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 an artist? That's what I want to know. 
Well, it's, I spent most of my time running back to the car grabbing to grab my notebook and write down um, song lyric ideas. <laughs> I, I wrote a I wrote a magnum rock opa, uh, opus rock opera that. Um, Listen, I can get one of the guitars down. Should we have a little jam? Should we do that? Should we have a jam? <laughs> right now? Oh, maybe, maybe some other time. <laughs> the only group I know from two groups I know from New Zealand. One would be what? Split ends? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. They were kind of strange. That, you're, you're, again, you're forgetting oh, the immortal I, I, um, all... say, say all that again. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I got excited. I, I, got, the same time. I got excited only, talking about uh, New Zealand music. Um, oh, the, best, the best New Zealand band ever is uh, yeah. Flight of the Concords. Uh, did you say the Mockingbirds? No, no, sorry. The, the, <laughs> so, I can't, no, you're both well, we're talking uh, at the same yeah, time again. Flight oh, of the Concords. Concords. Oh, the Flight of the Concords, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. It's no, totally no. the... The, very much the New Zealand attitude. Um, you've got about the best, the best uh, state states person in the world at the moment. Your 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 lady is a good lady. She's yeah. doing well. A lot of people are afraid that we're going to wake up one day and find ourselves in a police state, which I guess everyone else around the world is. Um, <laughs> but um, she's she's putting a very nice face on it. I would agree. Sorry, does it with her? From, uh, in, from an international kind of perspective, looking down at what New Zealand are doing in this time of crisis, you seem to be getting it a wee bit better than everyone else. So. Yeah, seem to be. But there's, yeah, like I said, there's always people are suspicious of of of, of things and governments and and uh, I'm I'm she's giving away a lot of money at the moment, and so I'm making full use of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you probably share it. With you. <laughs> I, I may find I may find that. Um, I have to pay it all back and I'll, I'll be in her debt at some stage, but hopefully that won't happen. <laughs> this is the thing. If you're unhappy with New Zealand, where would you run away to? Because most yeah. of us would say, first of all, in the United Kingdom, we go to Scotland, right? Yeah. And then other people would say, if we don't like that, we'll go to New Zealand. So where the heck would yeah. you go if you were in New Zealand to get away from you know your police state? Because we think you've got it pretty good. Yeah, yeah, to be honest. That is pretty good. I, I think so, people are upset with authority there's always a struggle between authority and freedom and it, like your left wing and your right wing both want authority and both want freedom but in different places so it's really really tough getting what getting do you want brendan do you want freedom or 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 do you want you know you kind of you kind of take the freedom is that what you're about to tell us is that it's, it's, i want to uh, stay in bed <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and read comics no, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we can have these discussions during our uh, beer and comics podcast. That's Stav saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Set the world to fight over a beer. Yeah. And next yeah. week we'll be discussing, you know, the chaos theory and, you know, there we go. However, Black um, holes. Where would you go from New Zealand? I, I think the Pacific Islands are fantastic, especially Samoa, as they say. We've got a lot of, um, I know a lot of Rarotongans and a lot of Samoans here in Christchurch. And if you ever get a chance, look up the Laughing Samoans. <laughs> and they, they're like the silliest, funniest comedians you've ever heard of. And um, uh, our, our, our locals, the Māori people, are very um, dignified. Uh, Did you say the Māori people? M yeah, that's how they pronounce it, Māori. Māori. Okay. Māori, mate. Māori. The Māori. <laughs> yeah, got to roll your R's. <laughs> um yeah they're, they're very dignified uh into into um you know respecting elders but the samoans their elders are um the the most respected person in the village is the comedian ah <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just you just have to yeah and and uh i mean i guess there's no no um no wondering why robert louis stevenson went there to do part of his writing <laughs> career Okay, just, um, I think the most respected person in Scotland is 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 is, is your big yen, isn't he? You know, it's uh, it's Billy. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Except the Samoans are much more laid back than the Scottish. Even they're just uh, it's hot, hot, I guess, and um, it's yeah. <laughs> you just, need, <laughs> just just do the research, and you'll be you'll be quite impressed. 
Anyway, back to something. <laughs> um, right, I, I was gonna, I was gonna pull this. To, um, we usually only go an hour on the show. Yeah, um, I know. Uh, I, I, before, I, 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 I off a dog. However, <laughs> however, um, interview I'm, old. <laughs> I don't know how Bigsy has done this, and that um, I, uh, Bigsy has um already communicated and chatted to us about his his lack of tech uh, savviness however I, I want to add that jeremy dunn has just joined us in in the studio yay i, I suspect as part of a as part of you're doing so i'm just trying to grab him for okay tv see if he wants to join us but he's not got his he's camera on. so the background here jeremy dunn He's a quite a good artist, and his son is doing the writing. So we've got a father and son team coming up in issue two. That's that's quite good. I wanted to do that because PJ Holden has got a lad, and he may well do some stuff with his dad. And then I'm going to try and get Henry Flint and his son Sean to do something as well. So uh, mm. going to be doing a theme here. What about your son Brendan? What what's he up to? Is he able to you know? Well, uh, I've got three sons. So I've got a fair bit to choose from. <laughs> None of them are in comics at this stage. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, you'll need them putting on uh, stamps on envelopes before you know it, mate. Yeah. The uh, the jolly um, you put us on to um, uh, put us on to uh, doing the press releases here in New Zealand to advertise the seventy seven, and um, so I've, I'm getting my wife to help me out with that, which is good. They're going to yeah, arrive before some of the ones in the United Kingdom. I tell you, there are people going mad that they haven't got theirs. And I'm just like, I can't help. <laughs> They've all been posted. Oh, dear. So when's yours being sold then, um, Jeff? Because you said you were at the printers last week. Yeah, um, we were uh, during this whole uh, this, 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 this confusion regarding who we were going to have on as our guest this evening. Uh, me and Colin were scrabbling <laughs> about half seven. We were scrabbling for um, half seven UK time, scrabbling to work out right, well, what we're going to podcast about because we we always go out at eight on a Thursday. Um, so we were going to we were going to um, we were going to go. Well, we just well we just do a bit of back pattern, and I'll review Colin's co new comic, um, which I've got in my hand here, um, Point of the Eagle, by Colin. Oh. Um, I was going to review that because I read it and it's amazing. And then Colin, I think you should. I think you should do it. Definitely, Colin's going to be a bit upset otherwise. <laughs> and Colin's, Colin's holding my comic. <laughs> so, um, uh, uh, no, um, no, 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 another time. Eagle. Another um, time. Yeah, I, I, I do want to talk about a few things actually. This phenomenal cover, which was mm. done by famed and um, well-respected. Um, I've had a lot to drink. Sorry. <laughs> I'm only I'm my glasses. Show me again. See if I can tell yeah, from the, 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 cover art, the cover art is by Ian Kennedy. Who... Ian Kennedy. Yeah, it's painted by Ian Kennedy. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Magic. Magnificent. And as Colin, I mean, Colin have chatted about it a wee bit. And then Colin was saying that um, he's had some people approach him who are big fans of Ian's work in commando comics and mm. they feel that flight of the eagles cover which i'll hold up just again for the time is um is is some of ian's best work in quite a while so mm. um i think that's quite i think that's quite amazing um and yeah it's a, it's a true story of the orzo which um i'm from recite originally i know live in the firm but i'm from recite originally and the orzo quite a big thing in our area it was um it was a submarine um a polish submarine that we spent a lot of time in Recife during World War Two, having had a series of quite incredible adventures um, in the late thirties, early forties. So um, it is great, really, really well written. Um, I actually, when Colin delivered this to my house, um, um, so <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brendan, I ain't coming back on this show. <laughs> you're, 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 you're taking our uh, our um, creative um, flow. I'm so sorry, man. That's fine. Um, I'm going to review this properly, but um, I, I do think Colin has done a superb job, and I think everybody that has read it or has a copy of this agrees with me, and you should totally check it out. 
Um, mm. You will get that at maximised.co.uk, which is... Oh, th thanks, Jeff. That's very kind of you. And I really, really enjoyed it. Um, my dad came past a day later-ish to drop off some stuff, and I had it in my hands because I just finished reading it. I was in the garden, and I, I, I finished reading it, and my dad was dropping something off, and so I handed it to my dad um, using social distancing, of course, and put it in the middle of the garden and he came over and he pre-approached and he looked at it. I said, that's my friend Colin's comic. And mm. uh, my dad um, took it away and I've not seen it. And so <laughs> um, and Colin had to give me another one. So, <laughs> so it's because um, he enjoyed it. Okay, um, I'm going to bring Jeremy in. And Jeremy's sitting there very, very patiently. Um, Bengsi, since you, you want to get rid of me now, you can get rid of me now. <laughs> this is your party, mate. You, 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 you've you've turned our podcast into your your social event. So I'm going to bring him in. <laughs> there he is. Good. Oh, that's Steve. Oh, is he oh no. Yeah. I'm giving him back. Oh no, he's run away. Jeremy's run away. No, I think I think he heard me and he was like, oh no. Uh, <laughs> um, he's away to get a beer. I don't know. We'll see if we can come back and join us back in. If any of you guys have him, just give him a wee message and see just see if he's all right. Um, Bexie, what's um, what's the plans for issue two of uh, the 77? So of we've, had some, we've had some feedback and generally we're going to listen to it. But although pretty much issue two was in the in the bag, um, we, we ran with something like 15 stories in issue one. We're down to about 12 um, in issue two. So we're going to have five strips continuing um so we obviously have a whole batch of new ones um i actually would need my screen up to actually look at the the, the, the rundown but um there's yeah it's some pretty pretty exciting new stuff in there um i'm i'm just i'm just equally pleased to see for example the return of lee stringer's sergeant shouty who i think is awesome yes. what did you think colin did you like sergeant shouty i did i really like that yeah yeah he's, he, he's a cool guy isn't he well, Where's Sergeant Shouty? Let's have a look. The biscuit uh, is totally empty. Not even a digestive. Not even digestive. I don't want your donuts. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want those donuts. Oh. Um, a few people, unfortunately, can't get back in for issue two, so there'll be continuation. But what I have, I've really uh, sort of stren strenuously stipulated is that we use the old-fashioned catch-up um, cap captions. You know, ca sorry. Catch up captions uh, because it's going to be months. You know, we're not going to have it out till August, and I'd like to get quicker than that. I'd like to go to two monthly. Um, but uh, oh, here we go. Jeremy says sorry, only catching half of every third word and couldn't even type into the chat box. Yeah. Okay. It's me who's got the IT is issues. Then, eh? There we go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you want to see, ask him if he wants to just join back in and see if it was just a connection issue? Um, the no. thing is, my computer's working so slow. When I actually try and even put a message on. Mm. Yeah. Everything I think seems to slow down. So, so bear with me a second. I think it's oh, I'm just well. naturally slow. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Jeremy? It's a slow connection all the way across. It's a slow connection only. Um, so yeah, we've got um, Charlie Gillespie turning back up again with um, a strip for Steve McManus called The Collector. Mm. And mm. the idea behind that is is that Charlie um, is joining um, a team of people who are putting together um, the original Blaze comic, which is fictitious, but it exists in the mind and in the pages of The Sheer Glam Conspiracy, which is the Steve McManus novel. Mm. At the back of the novel are five scripts, and I've optioned them. Um, Steve's given them to me to, to, to do. So Brendan's is the first one. Charlie's doing another. And then we've got um, quite a few really i'm just like so totally amazed i don't really want to say yet who's doing it but we got some real kind of big hitters doing the artwork for the rest and then we're going to collect it as a comic so the mm. idea is the 77 is it's going to become a um, bit of a publishing house and we're going to spin off and we're going to hopefully if brendan sorts out those speech bubbles um uh, we're going to be producing the martian law so um you know yeah. that'll be another comic that comes together um i've also got a translator in hand a french and a spanish translator because i've had feedback from them they wouldn't necessarily want to take the comic as it is, but they'd certainly take kind of collections, you know, band désigné, as the French call them, um, 48 pages of probably 12 pages each. So I'd have to put, you know, a couple of issues together, three or four issues together of some of them and, and make it a continuous strip. And that would be digital 
because it's not that hard to do the artwork as long as the you know long as the files are correctly done and the art and the and the um balloons are, are layered but it's interesting it throws up some ideas because for example coming back to our favorite my favorite image of the whole comic which is this one brendan you can see that yes yeah. yes Neil well, is a treasure. I'm not, I'm not editing that. I'm not going to change yuck. So what we'll do is, well, they do in Asterix, they used to put a little paste on, a pasted caption with a translation next to it, just a yeah. tiny one, to give it the English or the, you know, the equivalent. Um, so, because that's all. There's that. an amazing comic. I don't know if you're familiar with it, um, um, called uh, Sync, um, which is, a uh, it was John Lee's that did Sync, Colin. Um, and um, there's there's some amazing sound effects in there. I would love to see how if you gave them the asterisk treatment. There's a there's a, there's an amazing there's an amazing. It's a, a Colin knows where I'm going with this. That's why he's like kind of giggling in the corner. There's this <laughs> bit where, like, one of the characters destroys somebody with a shovel, and the the sound effect a bit like yuck is fucked. <laughs> what well, is it? There a very famous Captain America where he throws his shield. And the oh, sound yes. effect is is wank. Yeah. I want them to say like <laughs> Sorry, I was reading a vector the other day with Figaro in it, and Figaro tells this guy that he's gonna bonk him. <laughs> and then in the next part of it bonks him over the head. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there are whole Facebook groups about that sort of stuff, aren't there? They're really funny. Looking yeah. at captions and um, single panels and stuff. No, really Listen, serious. guys, um, I'm going to have to get off because I've got to build a house because we've had the decorators in today. And that what, what actually was happening there was a bed was being moved. <laughs> I love that you not... still need to feel like you have to explain that. Like, we were all so happy <laughs> when I <laughs> so, Brendan, so, Brendan, I'll catch up with you, I don't know, in, in a bit. Maybe are you are you working today? And are you uh, not working? Well, it all depends on what you call it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you can answer some messages. Yeah, you? yeah, yeah. And Colin, uh, where are we left it? Where are, where are we now? Have you you sent me some stuff? Yeah, you did. You sent I me some. Uh, you, prelims, I sent you, you some pictures. I sent you some sketches and saying, "Yeah, I'm 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 good if you want to go for it." Oh, that's it. That's good. That's good. Nice. So, so just remind me who's the writer because I've, I've had a couple of drinks now. <laughs> Who's the writer? Uh, Mr. McManus. Oh. It is Mr. McManus. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll um, yeah, that's good. I was chatting to him today. It's so funny having chats with this guy because he's just like, the biggest, weirdest thing is editing. Editing the best editor, I reckon, in the world ever. And it's just yeah. like, 2000 AD, 2000 AD, Prog 87, you know, amalgamation with Star Lord up mm -hmm. to Prog two, uh, 520 which is when he mm. signed off, but, you know, including Prog 500. Oh, my God, all those. And I'm just like, and I then have to come back to him and say, could you change the word Jap? Because it's not <laughs> <laughs> Jap anymore. Change it to <laughs> Nip. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, so. Um, Thank you so much. Thanks for fun, guys. Um, if anybody else turns up, they can have my slot. Hey, Jeff, uh, or sorry, your name is, Ma what's, Mag Maglevian? Oh, yeah, sorry, because don't say it, because it's, it's deliberately secret so that people can't find me. Ah, so when I went, when I stalked you, face, Facebook stalked you, I'm like, I wouldn't accept you in my group, mate, looking at those weird <laughs> things. It was like, you know, no way. No way. I don't even know what you mean. I'm like, oh, my goodness, what have I, what, what, how do, can you look at your own Facebook profile as a visitor? <laughs> Oh no! Uh, there's things you can do. There's things you've you given, can you've do. You've given me a day, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, though, since um since I've started uh, re posting seventy seven and slash two thousand AD slash comic book things, I think all of all of my friends have stopped following me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's everyone's polite and respect respectful because we've got. There's so many creators involved, you know, on the page. I mean, we had Rob Williams turn up the other day, and he's, and you know, we're not supposed to be kind of like making, you know, taking the mickey out of people. Um, and we don't. I mean, if you want to do that, there are other pages where people are really kind of, you know, they say, they say, they say all sorts of things, and you just think, wow, I wouldn't want to read this if I was involved, you know. So uh, we try and keep it respectful. 
Mm. But it's weird. Have you thought it, Brendan? Have you seen those reviews and stuff? What did you think when you were reading it? Uh, well, I'm a Kiwi, so <laughs> people can be as rude as they want, and we probably think they're right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, guys. Do I? Can I? Do you let me go? Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll you, man. Thank you so much for having uh, been with us. And we'll it's speak been to you wonderful. Today. And uh, live long and you know space warp and all that. See you guys. <laughs> oh my it's been the most random podcast we've ever had. <laughs> yes, yes. I've just googled That's myself really just to see what, what comes up, and there's an awful lot of photographs of me dressed as a Flash, which um. Oh, I'm gonna, have, which I'm gonna have to start <laughs> start working out how to um, alter. Um, yeah, um, have you, Brendan. Before we go, have you got anything coming up other than your work in the seventy seven? Your um, your Martian Law comics. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, well, <laughs> at the moment, um, because I've only just made a comeback to comics. Um, uh, so Martian Law is. The main thing but um ben's really been um well first of all because because the government gave us all this money to um to help our ailing businesses i've been able to um not do my regular illustration work and work on the comic instead um unless they're a really good client in which case i'll take them on and charge them lots of money um and so ben's been uh forcing me as a writer, which, I mean, I'm not not a writer, but he's wanting to develop whatever skills he can. So um, <clears throat> he's been getting me to research to the nth degree everything I possibly can, just so I know the background of my story, so that um, uh, so that I can write from that pool. And it's been interesting because uh, I've learned stacks about Mars just yesterday. Um, and and I'm used to drawing all day, so reading Wikipedia is torture. <laughs> um, uh, and and so I've learnt stacks about Mars. I've learnt stacks about the uh, the American um, county system. <laughs> I've learnt there is a Martin County, not Martian County, Martin County in <laughs> Texas, and uh, it has about four thousand people in it, which which is I thought, okay, well, I should use this place as my model because it's about, it's about what, I, what I expect um, it to be like on Mars. Lots of one-horse towns with a, perhaps a house, a post office, and a, uh, a, a grill, a bar. Um, <clears throat> and, and this place in America is just like that. And I found there, um, I found there, you wouldn't call it city council because it's not really, they don't have a city, but their, their, their website anyway. And it, and it turns out they have a, a sheriff and he has a grey moustache. He's an old fellow with a grey moustache, just like mine is. That's <laughs> 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 unbelievable. That is incredible. That is, yeah. That's quite amazing like, what you're saying about like what you end up researching. I actually messaged Colin the other day because I've become, in the last week, I've become an like an overnight expert on the Baghdad plumbing system. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. That's deep. <laughs> Just the stuff that you look at. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and and uh, y your average poppy expert doesn't have to know much about <laughs> his subject, does he, to, to seem impressive to to the average punter? <laughs> and these men, and oh boy yeah. right well we uh, well, we call it an evening you're, I think you're you're gonna, <laughs> yeah. there's a reason why our podcast only lasts about an hour is because by if you go to like an hour 45 like <laughs> the conversation goes to random places so <laughs> it was really nice to meet you brendan that was that was awesome <laughs> to have you join us and all right then, We'll get you on again because this has been amazing. <laughs> oh, bananas! Have a have a uh, splendid evening. You as well, Colin. Have a nice night. Cheers, man. <laughs> yeah. Bye bye. bye.